Hi, I'm Robin McKell. Welcome back to Nice. You've played in Nice uh, and on the Côte d'Azur many times. We are very happy to have you here again. Thank you. And the uh, first time you came here was in, in Nice, at the Cédac de Simier. You were uh, singing straight ahead jazz. And since then, you've made a move from jazz to soul music. Yes. Why? But did uh, what was the move from? What made you uh, do this? Well, this I, move. I grew up singing a lot of soul and, and R and B music, um, and then I actually was led um, into jazz. So for me, it's more of a return to my roots, um, and um, I just felt that that's where I wanted to take the music and, and evolve. Uh, with my songwriting, which was more in a soul style as well, so um, it, it felt pretty natural for me. Although I'm sure some people who discovered me um, with the first album, which was very straight ahead, um, were surprised. But I do think if you saw my live shows, you would understand very well where I was going and, and why, because you can see and you can hear that. Um, the soul and the, and the music, even when I was singing straight ahead. So, um, you know, I I think it's it can be difficult to, for me, I don't want to be constantly doing the same thing or be stuck in this box of a jazz singer. Um, so I, I, I felt it was, it was just where I needed to go and, and to, to feel true to myself, to be true to, to the music of what I was singing and and the show that I was putting on. That's, what the, that's the music you were listening to when you were young, like uh, Edda James and Arthur Franklin and when you were... Yeah, a when kid. I was little, a no. lot of Aretha Franklin and, you know, Whitney Houston was very, very, it was huge when I was growing up and, you know, obviously that's not really, you know, the same kind of R&B music, but um, to be influenced by a vocalist like her, uh, at a young age was very um, impressionable, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Stevie Wonder, of course, too. <laughs> yeah, Stevie Wonder was yeah. joined the last year. Yeah, 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 he was, I, I missed it because I, I was here but then left, so I didn't see it. And uh, you, with your last album, The Heart of Memphis, you made a trip into a musical journey to the art of soul music, of rock and roll too, because Memphis is the birthplace of soul music with the studio, the Stax records and all that. Also the Sun records with all these person it's yes. different styles. So you wanted to go really close to the source of the music? Yeah, I, I wanted to get the sound. Like there's a there's a very um, distinct Memphis mm. sound in also not only the music style but the recording process. And so I felt it was important to be there and also to be in the city to, to be affected by the surroundings and the, the people there and just the ambiance of the city itself uh, and it really did have a, an effect on me and how I, you know, what I wrote, uh, the music I wrote and also how I felt about, you know, being there. It was, it was, not, it was a pleasure to be there and to be recording, uh, to walk past, you know, the, stu the great studios. You know, it's very inspiring and it, it kind of, it makes you feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm following in the footsteps that I've of the people that I've been, you know, inspired by. And uh, do you think that you will ever come back to jazz, or is that just the past? It's gone. It's finished. No, I think um, I think I I probably would. Um, and for me, the the funny thing is, is I I'm a really I'm a person who feels music is. <coughs> Is a whole. Is a whole, and so it's difficult for me to really com um, compartmentalize jazz or soul or blues or pop or R and B. To me, it all comes from the same place. Although I know stylistically, it, it's it's different. It can be different. Um, but I, I think you know, I, I what I do believe is that my artistic, you know, career and and development is very open and. Um, I need to feel um, I need to feel inspired and and want to do a project and, and 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 I do I don't think it's jazz is finished for me that's it would be terrible for me to feel that way or say that because it's such a 
large part of the, the singer that I am and the musician that I am, so it's always part of me. Uh, will I return to doing a traditional jazz album? Uh, it's possible, um, but anything's possible. Anything's yeah, possible. Uh, it is, it is. You know, I do have some interest in doing something maybe uh, in, in more of a small group form because I did do the um, big band albums, you know, and so if I did do something, it, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do a big band album again because I've kind of done a couple and I don't know, I have to see where the music takes me, you know. And you think you can reach, you with your solo albums, you've reached a broader audience. Um, it's a different audience. I think it, I think it has the potential to be broader because it's a uh, more, um, I, I think people, I think when you say the word jazz, sometimes people are turned off by it, you know, they're scared by it, but in fact, it's because they don't know. It's like a fear of, of well, I think I won't like it. I mean, so often I have people approach me after shows and say, after this show, where you see it's a soul show, or you know, this is my first jazz concert ever, <laughs> and was, I just loved it so much. And all I think is like, oh god, I hope you don't go to you know <laughs> some like crazy out like jazz concert. And you're like, what am I thinking? But it, you know, the music that I do, even though it is soul right now, and there's a lot of blues in it, uh, it's not pop music, and it's not in this, um, it's not commercial music. So. I think that's why now so many things are called jazz that, that are actually not really jazz. jazz. I mean, we could talk about the new Diana Krall album. Mm -hmm. This is not necessarily a jazz, jazz. album, no, but no. she is a jazz artist and there are influences of it there. So it's a very like watery, not gray subject. So um, yeah, I, I, I forgot even the question we were talking about. We were talking about jazz and all this stuff. No, I asked you if you were um, reaching a broader yeah, audience with your solo. Broader, solo broader. I think, you know, I see a, a, a broader range mm -hmm. in, um, you know, I had, last night there was, you know, 15, 14 year old, 15 year old girls in the audience that were just loving every moment of it. And then, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. 60s, okay. That's great, the, the, the generations are there, you know, people are there with their grandkids, you know, people are there with their kids, or, um, it might be easier to, re I, I think music is difficult to reach broad audiences mm. when you're a, a, a smaller artist and like I am. When you're deeply rooted, it's, a, it's more difficult than if, if you go into the pop world right. by I, itself. I think, yeah, and even if you are in the pop world, it's it's just such a challenge to get your music heard um, by whatever, you know, outlet, radio, internet, um, you have to be constantly pushing it like a product. And, and we as artists are not great at doing those things, you know, unless you have a team working it all behind you, which I'm fortunate to have, but still, even for the team, it's like running an uphill battle. So it's, any music I think is difficult to, to, to you know, make your way through and get yourself heard these days, whether it's pop or jazz or R&B. So we just have to do it for the love of it, right? Yes, that will be the end. <laughs> That's a beautiful ending for our conversation. Thank you very yeah. much, Robin. Merci, merci, merci beaucoup. Uh, bon concert. Merci. merci. merci.